How many times have you heard a guy say, man, I just don't know what shoes to wear with this outfit? Yeah, never, because guys don't talk like that. But that doesn't mean that guys don't care about how they dress and how they look. It just means that they're a little bit better at covering it up. Well, today, we're gonna pick your style. We're gonna figure this thing out. Boom, Dewey Groove. So we're gonna start this thing off with a five part series. Five plus one, it's gonna be six. Where it's gonna first start off with today in this video, we're gonna talk about picking your style. After that, we're gonna look at your closet and determine exactly what's in there, what to keep, what to get rid of, and just how to manipulate the purification of that. After that, we're gonna go into your minimalist wardrobe. Just the absolute basic basics on starting your wardrobe, right? After that, we will talk about understanding the colors that look good on you. So if you've got darker tones, lighter tones, if you're a fall, like rust colors as opposed to a winter where it's more cool and ice blue, we'll get into that. After that, we're gonna go into accessories. You know, accessories can, can make the outfit and can also break it. So we'll get into jewelry and watches and cologne and all of that good stuff. And then after that, we're going to look at a fall or winter lookbook and just kind of look and see exactly what I'm wearing, how I'm rocking it, and my particular style will just kind of go over that. All right, so let's get into the 10 style types that are out there. First, we're gonna start off with the dandy. Now, the dandy is someone who is razor sharp in their appearance. There's never a hair out of place. Everything is always crisp, clean, perfectly coiffed, perfectly groomed, and all of that. This is actually a, a, a pretty tough trait or personality style type to pull off because it takes a lot of effort. I mean, you, you are impeccable with everything that you're working with. Um, this is something that most people, it's tough for them to attain, but you can. So now the second one. Let's go into that rugged man. <laughs> that rugged man is somebody that is all about working with their hands and getting into what they need to get into to get whatever they need to accomplish. This is someone who's more form over fashion. They don't care so much about styles or anything like that. They're really more worried about, well, how warm is that outfit? How comfortable of those shoes will i slip when i'm in the in the shop so the rugged man is somebody that is very utilitarian they are very salt of the earth construction worker woodworker type of person that you know great all right next up is the confidence man now the confidence man it's not even about the clothes that they're wearing it's about them exuding just this absolute charisma of, look, I don't care what I have on, I look good, or I don't care what I have on, I'm confident in what I am. This is tough to pull off because you have to have a fair amount of self-esteem, but if you have that self-esteem, it is going to shine. So it really doesn't matter what you wear because it's gonna come through. Now, these types of people are very close to trendsetters and it's very easy for them to set trends because they're going to be kind of funky. They're going to be kind of out there and they're going to be kind of different from everybody else. Next up is going to be the classic. Now, the classic, which warms my heart a little bit, is the guy that you can take a picture of them today and five, seven years from now, what they have on, what they're wearing, how they're wearing it is still going to look good because the classic man is somebody that's not going to take a whole bunch of risks by great big loud patterns and 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 bold colors and all that stuff. They're going to have colors, they're going to have patterns, but they're going to be a lot more muted because the things that they're going to be putting on are going to be able to stand the test of time. It's going to be maybe a simple charcoal suit with a white shirt and maybe a gray tie, or maybe a red tie. Maybe you get that pop of color with the tie, or maybe the tie bar, or maybe the socks. But the classic man is going to take chances, is just not going to be very bold and big and loud and in your face. They're gonna be subtle, but they're gonna be effective. 
But the most important thing about a classic man is they're going to look good in what they are wearing multiple years from now. Next up is the trendy. Now, the trendy is somebody that's going to be very much steeped in what's hot right now, right? They're going to be into things like back a couple of years ago, the stripes on the on the pants. They're going to be into leopard print. They're going to be the ones that are going to be in things that are going to be bold. They're going to be out there and they're going to be... <laughs> They're going to be something that a lot of people are not going to be confident enough to be able to wear, but the trendy, they're going to be right there. That's going to be home. Next up after that is going to be the trendsetter, which kind of goes hand in hand with the trendy. But the difference is, is that the trendsetter is going to be wearing the same things, but they're going to be the first one wearing those same things. And they're going to have to have a certain level of popularity for that trend to catch on because they're going to be the ones blazing the trail, right? So you think of your your music artists, your, your Jay-Z's, your Kanye West, anybody that's in the prominent figure or in the prominent spotlight, they're going to be somebody that's going to be a trendsetter and they're going to be the ones blazing the trail. All right, next up is going to be your streetwear. Your streetwear style is going to be somebody that's going to be probably a little, little bit younger and somebody who is, well, in the streets in the sense that they're going to be dealing with a lot of other younger guys out there that are going to be wearing bigger, bolder things that are for the youth, right? So it's kind of a trendy thing, but it's a trendy thing towards comfortability and a casualness that comes from it. So you're going to see, and this is where you're going to see a lot of distressed jeans. You're going to see a lot of sweatpants. You're going to see a lot of cool, casual things, maybe an oversized shirt with skinny pants or something like that. Streetwear style can be can be pretty cool actually. It's just for the younger younger generation or younger crowd. All right, next up is gonna be your athleisure. Athleisure is kind of the, the big brother to streetwear style. Only difference is, is that what they're gonna be wearing is a lot of stuff that's geared towards athletics, comfortability, dry fit things. Now, you can still have sweatpants in this one you can still have a lot of the oversized things but a lot of the things that are going to be in here are going to be things that are going to have a dual function they're going to be a little bit streetwear style but they're also going to be very comfortable and something that you could wear around the house or that you could wear doing athletic activities right so these tend to be a little bit closer to form fitting a little bit more streamlined a little bit more aerodynamic all right next up we've got our minimalist now that minimalist is going to be somebody that's going to have a lot of pieces in their closet that work well with the other pieces in their closet. And it's not going to be a lot of pieces, actually. It's going to be a smaller number because they're going to get a lot of utility out of what they're going out, out of what they're wearing. So what does that mean? That means the pieces in this closet need to be of higher quality because they're getting a lot more use and they can't make a lot of bold statements because these gray pants need to be able to go with this blue shirt which needs to go with these gray shoes right now that doesn't mean that you can't have color but those colors are going to be a lot more muted and not quite as aggressive and loud because you need to be able to potentially wear that shirt on Monday and then turn around the next the following Tuesday and be able to wear that shirt again in a totally different way and people not be able to pick up on that shirt being worn again. It's kind of like the clothes that you're wearing in a minimalist wardrobe need to function so seamlessly with the other ones that they almost blend in to just being an outfit where the sum of the parts is nowhere near what the whole, everything kind of comes together, together to emote a feeling or emotion of seamless integration. All right, last and certainly not least, you got your preppy, right? And the preppy is going to be somebody that's going to be wearing a lot of collegiate type, historically collegiate type outfits like rugby shirts, cardigans with the stripes on them, you know, school colory type of things where it's going to be something for a mid 20 something guy who is kind of trying to fit in with every other mid 20 something type of guy in that school 
right? So it's going to be heavily influenced by the colors of that school as well as the function of the product. You take rugby shirts, for example. Rugby shirts are specifically a uniform for the rugby football players, but also it identifies you as somebody who's in a college atmosphere that's wearing that type of that type of gear. All right, so now that we've identified our style types, let me give you an idea of what I do and what's important to me. So I'm someone who likes to take hikes. I work in a corporate environment. I like to run errands on the weekends and, and do my things there. I like to be comfortable. And there are some things where I am experimenting with color, but also with a little bit of form that might be a little bit different than, than other people. So adding all of those things together, that kind of gives you an idea of some of the things that I might need as far as say, let's say taking hikes, for example, that means I need some of my clothes to be somewhat durable, rugged, be able to withstand walking through forests and branches snagging on me and other things I might need to get on the ground because I do a lot of recreational shooting uh, with my rifles. So I need to be able to get out in the dirt and still be able to come home, throw that in the wash, and it'd be okay. Working around in a corporate environment also means that I need some things that are a little bit more sophisticated. If I'm talking to a C-level executive, I need to be put together enough to where he's looking at me and my clothes don't count against me. I want them to work for me. I want them to see me as somebody that's professional. The, net, the, the last thing is I like to run errands as well, but I like to be comfortable while I'm running those errands, but also while I'm running those errands, I want to look good. So there are some things in there. I got some J's in there, Jordans for those who are uninitiated. And with those, they need to be able to, to look good with what I have on, be clean. You got to keep those shoes clean. You got to keep those clothes clean. And with all of that, still look fabulous. So for me, my style choice is I'm a classic confidence man. Those are my main thing with a little bit of rugged and athleisure. I do a little bit of woodworking and I also get out in the, in the field and take hikes and shoot and things like that. And I also run a lot of errands. So while I'm picking up things to go hike and go grocery shopping and do all of that stuff. So I like to be comfortable while I do that. So one of the first things that we're gonna do when we're putting our outfits and closets together is you need to define first your four or five baseline outfits, just absolute no brainer outfits where you can walk in there, pick this, pick this, pick this, put it on, walk out the door and you feel like a million bucks. You can put them together without thinking. Once you define those go-to outfits, then you can radiate other outfits from there. I'll give you an example. There are some things that I have, uh, there's an outfit that I have that is more of a gray pair of jeans with a gray sweater, white shirt underneath, and whatever accessories, whatever watch I'm wearing with some gray Chelsea boots. Now, to radiate from that, I can change the Chelsea boots from gray to brown, change the top from to a blue top to a blue sweater, and then maybe put on a tie that ties that those gray pants and that blue sweater together, and now I have a completely different outfit. And all I did was change the shoes and change the top. So, but the first thing you need to do is you need to put those four or five outfits together that just are nails, they are money. You can go from there. The next thing that we need to do is we need to identify the colors that work well with your skin tone. And we're definitely gonna get into that later. But right now, a brief primer is, is that if you've got a warm color tone, mid-tone in your skin, then that means that when you put on colors like rust and browns and tans, they are gonna look incredible on you. But on the flip side of that, cool, crisp colors like an ice blue are gonna make you look sick. They're gonna wash you out a little bit. But here's the thing, and here's the, the beauty to that. You can still wear ice blue, it just can't be the dominant color that's closest to your face. I'll give you an example. If I wear an ice blue sweater, if I was to change this sweater to an ice blue sweater and then put on some rust colored pants, it's a good look, but 
it's gonna make me look sick because that color up against my face is gonna wash me out. But if I reverse them and I wear a brown top with potentially ice blue pants, same color combination, but because the pants are so far away from my face and my hands, and chances are my pants are gonna, excuse me, my shoes are gonna be covering up anything down below my waist, it's a good look for me because the brown is going to integrate well with my skin tones. That makes sense. But again, we'll get into that and we'll get into your color options and we'll break out the color wheel and I'll show you exactly how to use that and, and work from there. Now, before we get into the last one, we're talking about body type. Hey, if you love this content, go ahead and hit that like button. Man, if you really feeling it, then go ahead and subscribe so that I can bring this to you on a weekly basis. We're gonna be dropping a lot of videos. They're gonna be coming rapid fire and then we'll probably level out after that. But go ahead and support your boy. Anyway, so body type. Body type is probably the, the most important thing. Just because slim fit jeans look good on that guy over there doesn't mean they look good, going to look good on you. If you're a bigger guy, you're going to need to wear pants that are big in the thigh and potentially maybe a straight fit down to your shoes because that's going to help keep your proportion correct. Whereas if you're a thinner guy, you can get away with slimmer fit, skinnier jeans, if you will. For me, I like to have my jeans slim and tapered, not skinny, but slim and tapered. Just to give you my dimensions, I'm 6'4", about 230 pounds. So I'm right on the edge of being a big guy, not quite yet, but I can still get away with, because of my silhouette, I can still get away with some slim fit stuff. Um, but some things don't look right on me slim fit, so I have to get them a little bit more relaxed, if you will. And last but not least, hey, stay true to your style. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you put on, you got to own it. And that's what ultimately, no matter what you put on, I mean, everything that I've said for the last 10, 15 minutes, you know, scrape it off. At the end of the day, you need to feel confident in what you're putting on. Now, I can give you some guidance and, you know, I'll take you through the journey that I took. But at the end of the day, this is for you. This is this is all on you. So be true to your style. Be comfortable in what you're putting on. Let's go and rock this thing.